And uh, let us stay aware of that, what God is busy doing. Amen. It is my utmost privilege to be here. I greet you all in the wonderful, precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to take this time to thank my pastors and spiritual leaders, Pastor Francia and Ari, for giving me this opportunity to share. And it's a great honor to be here as we are continuing on the series, Walk in the Spirit. Um, if I can just have my Bible and my iPad, please. That will be awesome. Thank you, Brother Alex. And uh, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, the schools have closed. Amen. Am I right? And um, that means that the kids are going to stay home, right? Grace to all the parents. Amen. I'm just kidding. No, we are, we are thankful that everybody's here. Not everybody has left. But we do pray over if you are going uh, for a bit of a break and a holiday over this festive season, if this might be the last time this year we see you. May the favor of God be over you and the protection of the Lord be over you wherever you travel. And we command traveling mercies over you, the vehicles you go over, your children are in, and that we all get back safely together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we, are, we had a tremendous weekend. We just firstly want to say thank you to all the parents that sent their kids for Friday night, our all-night service. We had an all-night service from 6 o'clock in the afternoon to 6 o'clock in the morning. And I also want to take this time just from the youth leadership to thank our pastors. They actually came back from Pumalanga in the morning, and they came here late in Rustenburg. They rushed here, and they still made an opportunity to minister to our children. Amen. So thank you so much, Pastor, for being here. And I'll speak about what happened the evening a bit later. There are some things I would like to share with you. I don't know if some of the guys are here. Um, I see the youth, some is here and some is still recovering. <laughs> Amen. Well, this morning, we're going to partake in the communion, as you can see. And, uh, but today, the topic is walking in unity. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, walk in unity. Now, I remember when, when I came into this church, and start attending from the children's church to this side, that was very, it was always a very awkward moment to say, say to your neighbor, and maybe you do not know the person next to you. So uh, just say to the other person, hi, this is my name, walk in the unity. Say, walk in unity. So just introduce yourself just to break the ice. Otherwise, you're telling something to somebody, you do not know who they are. But we're the family of faith. <laughs> Amen. All right, now, now that we are acquainted with one another, now we can get in the Word of God. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, you can turn to the book of Philippians. And I'm going to read from chapter 2 this morning. I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation. And I'm just going to give this as an introductory scripture for the message of today. I'm going to read Second Philippians, uh, Philippians 2, chapter 1, and I'm going to read till verse 11. It reads as follows. It says, look at how much encouragement you found in your relationship with the anointed one. You are full to overflowing with his comforting love. You have experienced a deepening friendship with the Holy Spirit and have felt his tender affection and mercy. So I am asking you, my dear friends, brothers and sisters, to be joined together in perfect unity. With one heart, one passion, and united in one love. Walk together with one harmonious purpose, and you will fill my heart with unbounded joy. Be free from prideful opinions, for they will only harm your cherished unity. Don't allow self-promotion to hide within your hearts. But be authentic, uh, but in your th authentic humility, put others first and view others as more important than yourselves. Abandon every display of selfishness. Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interests. And consider the example that Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, has set before us. Let His mindset become your motivation. He existed in the form of God, yet He had gone through no seizing equality with God as his supreme prize. Instead, he emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. He became human. 
He humbled himself. He became vulnerable, choosing to be revealed as a man, and he was obedient. He was a perfect, perfect example, even in that of his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. Verse 9 to 11 says, because of that obedience, God exalted him and multiplied his greatness. He has now been given the greatest of all names. The authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone will one day submit to this name. Those in the heavenly realm, those in the earthly realm, and even those in the demonic realm. And every tongue will proclaim in every language, Jesus Christ is Lord Yahweh, bringing glory and honor to God, His Father. Amen. May God bless His word this morning in Jesus' name. So we can see that there is a call on us as a church to strive for unity. In order for us to walk in unity, there is a couple of areas in our lives that need to realign themselves first. You see, the, ro the road of unity was paved forward by the blood of Jesus Christ. If we can readily recognize the blood of Jesus Christ and the power within the blood of Jesus Christ, we can position ourselves for supernatural heaven unity. Because that is what God has called us for. There's only one way on how to reach true unity in our nation and in our communities and in our families. And that is to be in unison and in unity and union with our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we know the scripture that declares in John chapter 14, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am life. No one comes to the Father except through union with me, unity, communion, oneness with Him. It says, to know me is to know my Father too. So what we see is with this supernatural intimacy with the Father, the intimacy will bring unity with Him. This morning, I want to speak to you about four different aspects in our lives in which we should search and look for unity and continue to strive for it. The first one, and you can write this down, is to be in unity with your identity. To truly know who you are. As we work with the generation that is coming up, we can see that there are so many identity crises that is happening in this generation. There are people that are, how can I say, they are acquiring their identity through what they have. But what you have is not who you are. Amen? Where you work is not who you are. What you do is not who you are. Your identity cannot be found in positional things. Because your identity is not a physical thing, it's a spiritual inheritance. Who you are is a spiritual legacy of that what has happened on the cross of Calvary. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we now have a way to be revealed as sons and daughters of God. Therefore, the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 15, You have not received the spirit of slavery, but you have received the spirit of adoption, where we now cry out, Abba, Father. You see, we can get so confused with what we do. Even for me, that is in full-time ministry. Who I am, my identity is not a pastor. It is what I do. It is my function. Who I am is a son of the Most High King. And nothing can ever change that because it's who I am. Therefore, we need to get alignment. Everybody say alignment. We need to get alignment in our hearts regarding who we are. In my car that I have, when I drive it a couple of miles, I can feel it's not performing to the level it should. The steering wheel, something is not right. Then I go here to Midas. I put it on the, on the, on the lift, and they do wheel alignment. The car is still the brand that it is. It's still a Ford Ranger. Just because it doesn't function the way it should doesn't mean the name changes. But when the alignment comes, it can do much more than it's currently doing. I want to tell you, just because you don't know who you are, doesn't mean that God has forgotten about you. It just means you are not fulfilling your purpose as that what God wants you to do. And the moment we can have alignment, when we can have unity in our identity, there is a release. If we look in Matthew 
chapter 16, where Jesus was speaking to his disciples from verse 13. And we spoke about this now a couple of Sundays. It says from verse 13, when Jesus came to Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples this very question. He said, what are the people saying about me? Who am I to them? And they said, some say you are John the Baptist, others you are Elijah reincarnated or Jeremiah or just one of the prophets. And Jesus asked this question and says, but you, who do you say I am? And I wondered, why did Jesus not in that moment first sort out their identity? Say, do you not know who you are? And he said, who do you say I am? And the Bible says that Simon Peter spoke up and he said, you are the anointed one. You are the son of the living God. And then Jesus replied, he said, you are favored and privileged. He said, I am favored. He said, I am privileged. He said, you are that once you recognize who he is. You are privileged and you are favored when you can recognize who he is to you. It says, you are the anointed one. Okay, sorry, next verse. It says, for you, Peter, or you, Simon, you, Simon, didn't discover this on your own, but my Father in heaven has supernaturally revealed it to you. And the very next verse, Jesus revealed his true identity. He said, people have called you Simon, which means read. But now I tell you, because you know who I am, I can tell you who you are. You are now Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. I will build my church. It says, when you have unity with your identity, something is flowing from that. It says, now I give you the name Peter. You are a stone. And upon this rock, with this bedrock foundation, I will build my church church and says and the power of death will not be able to overpower it because i will give you the keys of the heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth what is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth what is released in heaven he says when you are in unity with your identity the moment you step into that reality you are also moving into unity with your authority the moment you can readily recognize your identity, you are positioning yourself and becoming one with your authority. What is that? Not to only know who you are, but to know what you are called for. It says, now I call you Peter. But Peter has purpose. And that purpose is that you will bind and you will lose. You will have authority. You will rule and reign as kings and priests. And that is our original design. Because what happened when God created Adam? He said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. There was a unity in identity in the Garden of Eden. God created man with unity with God. Adam was walking the garden with God. Then there was a great separation, a falling away. Why? Because Eve did not have unity with her identity. She did not understand who she truly was. And she was trying to be a human becoming, not a human being. She wanted to become more. She wanted to taste more. And little did she know, she already had it. So many times in life, we search for things that God has already given us. And we go on wild goose chases for things and fortune and fame. And the Bible says promotion doesn't come from the north, the east, or the south, or the west. It's coming from above. It's coming from the Father of lights. I need you to understand that Scripture says the Father of lights. When you recognize Him as the Father and you see Jesus for who He truly is, you will know that you don't have to be a beggar. You are not a slave. You are a son and a daughter. All the silver and all the gold belongs to my Father. Why should I worry? Why should I fear? Therefore, you have not received the spirit of fear, but that of love. It's out of love that you were brought out of the dominion of darkness to the kingdom of light. That you can now cry, you can now cry out, Abba, Father. When Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, what is the very first thing that he had to say? Our Father who is in heaven. The, even the Lord's prayer starts with the declaration of identity. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
the moment you position yourself in your true identity, you are positioning yourself to release godly authority. And that is where God wants us. He wants us to have authority. Amen. When we turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 28, it speaks about when Jesus was speaking to his disciples just before he ascended to heaven. And the Bible says in Matthew, I'm going to read chapter 28 verse 17 out of the New International Version, the NIV. And I want to start with verse 17 because, okay, let us go to verse 18. Verse 18 declares, Then Jesus came to them and said, But when we see the word then, it means that something was happening before that. Then Jesus came to him. So something happened before. We'll get to that now. Verse 18 says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So I asked myself the question, why did Jesus say that to them? What happened before? So if we look at verse 17, it says that when they saw him, when the disciples saw Jesus, it says they worshipped him. They worshipped him. The word worship there is the word proskuneo. They were blowing love kisses to God. They were adoring his majesty, his wonder, who he was. Like we do, right? That, that is what we did with our worship. We were proskuneoing God, just blowing love kisses, adoration, giving him glory. It says, but as they worshipped him, while they were worshipping them, they still doubted. They still doubted. In their worship, they were doubtful. And because of doubtful worship, God had to remind them through Jesus and say, listen, the one you are worshiping has all the authority in this realm, in the heaven realm, that you can ever ask for. It says, now Christ, as he's going to ascend, he will live in you. So make the equation, says the Lord. If he has all the authority in heaven and on earth, and he lives in you, it means when you realize who He is in you and you are in Him, you have at your disposal with heavenly alignment all the authority in the heavens and on the earth. Complete alignment with heavenly authority, what you have been called to do. If we look at that word authority, it's the word exosia. And it means the power to have influence, the token needed to to pursue control, it means to have jurisdiction to release, and it is the power to bring liberty. The power to bring liberty. And if you look at the root word of exosia, which is exesti, it means to take this practice, this authority, and that means to exercise it out within the public. So we're talking about unity. God says in Matthew 6 verse 6, when you pray, when you have communion with me, go to your inner room and shut the door behind you. The God who sees you in the secret, that word sees, the word koinonia, intimacy. The God who becomes one with you, the God that stands in unity with you in the secret, he will reward you in the? He will reward you in the? In the open. Here it says, when you go to the open, I give you the authority to now possess the open, to rule and to reign. It says, now you take this exosia and you go act it out in the public. You see, the authority that's been given to us is not been given to us so we can have rank or position. The authority that's been given to us is to trample upon the snakes and the scorpions that's trying to hinder our purpose. The authority we've been given is not to lord over people. The authority we've been given is to win souls and to make disciples. Why do I say that? Because directly after he says, all authority has been given to me and I'm going to live in you. He gives the commandment on what to do with this authority. He says, now you have this precious gift. But let me instruct you on how to use this authority. It says now, in the Passion Translation, it says now wherever you go, whether you are at your workplace, whether you go to the shopping center, whether you are going to lie on the beach somewhere in December, whether you're going to the gym, the supermarket, a coffee shop, wherever you go, take this authority and make disciples 
of every nation. This authority is not trying to become something. It's releasing who you are. All authority to rule and to reign over according to our original design. It says, go and make disciples. Does it say of some nations? It says all nations. Those who God sent your way, regardless of their past, you win them, you save their souls through the blood of Jesus Christ, and you make them disciples. Reach out. You are blessed to be a blessing. Then it goes on, as we know, to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them to faithfully follow all that I have commanded you. So it's not saying go where you are to the coffee shops and just tell somebody about Jesus. We don't only tell people about Jesus. We journey with them on the walk that they walk with Jesus. So you reach out, but then you stay connected. Because God wants unity in our identity. He wants unity in authority. But God is also looking for unity in our community. And that is where we become the beacons of light in this city. By releasing who Jesus is and what he can do. And the love that we have received, now we freely give to those around us. Amen. It says in John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35 in the message translation. It says, let me give you this commandment. It says, love one another. Everybody say, love one another. Say it again, but say it, mean it with all of your heart. Say, love one another. Say, I will love everyone around me. Okay, let that sink in for a moment. Everyone around you. That means even your greatest enemy, on the day he bothers you the most, and he deserves it the least according to your heart. Love. Because an eye for an eye makes this whole world blind. We can never get ahead if we always try to get even. We can never build new buildings for the future if we build on old foundations. God needs to do a fresh new thing in our nation. And it can only be through Jesus Christ. Where we reckon no man according to the flesh. But we see the spirit man inside. And we realize there we have, we might have different mother tongues. Afrikaans, English, Chwana, Zulu, French. But our father... Our Heavenly Father speaks the same language, and that's the language of love. And that is where we unite. That is where we come together. It says, love one another. How? In the same way that I have loved you, says the Lord. In the same way I've loved you, you love one another. Why? It says, this is how everyone around you will recognize that you are my disciples. It says, this is how they will readily recognize your identity and your authority. It is by the way you love them. We cannot expect as the church, as Christians, that people should listen to us, but we never love them. How will they know that we are disciples of the God that says that He is love if we never show love? How will they know that Christ is within us if we do not love it says, this is how they will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for one another. Christianity is very simple. Say with me. Say, it's loving God and loving people. Say, it's loving people because you love God. That's it. Love is the key to supernatural unity. Amen. Therefore, as we are aligning our hearts with unity in our identity, as we walk in unity in our identity, in authority, you will change as a person. Your habits will change. Your desires will change. Where you want to go, who you want to hang out with, it is going to change. Because now you do not walk in what you want to do. You walk in His supernatural power that's directing you. And the first people that this will affect is your family. The very first people where you will see a change is that of your family. Because God has a desire for every family to be in unity. Amen. And the enemy comes. He tries to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He brings destruction, devastation, sometimes premature death. These things happen. But love overcomes all. All 
everything. And here it says that God has a dream for every family to be united within their household. Whether it be you as you are currently, maybe you are still an individual and your family is coming. It might be only you with your children. Or it might be you with your spouse and your children. God is calling your house into unity. Because the Bible declares in Psalms 133 verse 1. It says, how truly wonderful and delightful it is to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity. Hebrews 13 verse 1 is one of the shortest verses in the Bible. Not the shortest, but one of the shortest, but one of the most powerful. It says, let brotherly love continue. Now, I am, I'm not a professor and I'm not a teacher, but I had some amazing teachers. And they had taught me whenever you write a sentence, it's written in a certain tense. Amen? You get past tense, present tense, and future tense. And I was so happy because English was not my strong suits. <laughs> Believe it or not. I could not speak English until matric. <laughs> I had a friend that taught me. We had a deal. He will teach me English and I will teach him rugby. <laughs> and... Uh, the teacher said there's more tenses. So you get past, present, future. But then like you mentioned now, you get past, continuous, present, continuous. All right? So if this says, let brotherly love continue, it is giving a present command, but it's given in a continuous sense, a continuous tense. So it means be sustainable. Be determined and dedicated in what? In loving one another with a brotherly love. You know, I have a, I have a friend that, that's living in, in Van der Beil, And we have been best friends since high school. But we see one another maybe once or twice a year. We don't talk regularly. We are not in the same church. We do not always see eye to eye. But I promise you, if he calls me 2 o'clock in the morning and he needs me, I'll be there. No matter what happens, if I call him, he will be there. Why? We have a brotherly love. A brotherly love means being there for one another, despite not always seeing eye to eye. Despite having emotional, political, whatsoever disagreements, we are there for one another. Why? Because we are united under the love of Jesus Christ. It says, let brotherly love continue. And I want to speak especially to the men this morning. We need to stand for unity in our houses. If there, are, if there are mothers here and your husband might not be with you, you need to stand still for unity in your house. There's a, there's a scripture in, in, in Nehemiah 4 verse 14, and I'm going to read the B part. It says, don't be afraid of the enemy. Say, I am not afraid. Say it with conviction. I am not afraid of the enemy. Look at your neighbor and say, do not be afraid of the enemy. Now it says this. Why? Oh, there's always a why in a scripture. It says, do not be afraid of the enemy, but remember the Lord. When the enemy comes, don't fall back. Stand firm. Remember the Lord. For he is great and he is glorious. So now it says, do not be afraid. Remember the Lord. And then always in Scripture, there is a why. Everybody say why. So it says, do not be afraid of the enemy. Why not? Because remember the Lord. Why should we remember the Lord? It says, because you're about to fight. You're about to fight. It says, fight for your brothers. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Husbands, fight for your wives. Wives, fight for your husbands. It says, fight for your homes. Fight. What fight am I referring to? I'm not speaking about anything physical. Because the Bible says the fight we fight is not against flesh and blood. The moment you are fighting one another in the household, you are fighting a losing battle. Because a divided house cannot stand. The enemy brings the vision to bring divorce and it will end at destruction and death. But God says it's time to unite. So when I say fight for your brothers, fight for your sons, your daughters, your wives, your homes, 
I'm saying fight the good fight of faith. Fight the fight of unity. Do not allow any demonic influences in your house. Do not allow your children to play on YouTube for three hours without checking what they are watching. Be present. Be there. Because when you are present, it's the greatest gift you can ever give. It says fight the good fight of faith. What does that word fight mean? It says it implicates a battle. But listen to what this word fight means here. In the Bible, I'm, I'm quoting the Bible, amen. It means to devour, to eat up, to fight till victory, to overcome completely, to prevail against and make war if needed. Whenever a demon tries to come to my house, he needs to be ready for war. Because we need to stand as the watchmen on the walls of our houses and fight for unity. I will not allow rebellion in my house in Jesus' name. I will stand. And as mothers and as fathers and as children, we need to fight for unity. One heart, one passion, one faith, one baptism, one God that reigns supreme in our houses. Because what the enemy does, he tries to bring distractions and the Bible says, a double-minded man cannot receive from God. Are you experiencing lack in your house now for a while? I want to ask you, are you in complete unity with God in your house? Because the moment you have unity with God, you have unity with your identity. When you have unity with your identity, it means you carry authority. And when you carry authority, it means that there is no demon in hell that can try for you in your own house. It means you are the head and he's the tail. You are above and he is beneath. Therefore, we need to stand together more than ever before in our houses. Because a healthy family creates a healthy community and a healthy community promotes a healthy future. We cannot depend on next year to determine the future of our nation. Let me tell you, the future of South Africa is not only dependent on the next election. It is dependent on the next generation. The next generation will determine the footsteps of this nation. And the moment you want to wait for next year, God says, the time is now. We need to invest in our youth now. We need to show them how godly marriages look now. We need to show them how it means to prophesy and preach the name of Jesus now. We need to show them how it looks in the shopping centers to be loving husbands and wives now. Because if we don't show them, the world will. And they will seek a comfort that is artificial. It's like artificial grass. It looks very green, but it carries no life. We are not going to allow our future to be run by artificial things. True and authentic. The real love and the power that is within us. But we need to stand together. As a community, we need to do this together. And it starts by having healthy families. Amen. You know, my pastor always challenges me. He says, Pastor Drickers, you have cells. So yes, Pastor. He says, when do you have family cell? He says, do you call people that are sick and you pray for them? I say, yes, Pastor. He says, when do you pray over your wife and your children? You see, suddenly it's a, it's, a, it's a mind shift. And trust me, I'm not here preaching to you. I'm preaching to us. I can feel the fire on my feet as I'm standing here. And God's saying, Pastor Drikas, I hope you listen to what you are saying. <laughs> and I'm being real. Because I don't always have it together. A week goes by and I rest. I have not prayed. It happens. But you can sulk about it or you can change it. And it's time that we change it. Let me tell you, I realized in my house, there's no time to feel sorry for myself. Oh, no, no, my wife does not want to submit here with me. Pray. Amen. The prayer of the righteous makes tremendous power available. Let me tell you, your sulking will not change anything except your attitude. It will make it worse. But your praying will change your heart and the atmosphere in your house. Amen. We always pray here, Lord, prepare the atmosphere as the people walk in that they will encounter you. When last did you wake up an hour early and walk through your house and say, Lord, prepare the atmosphere for my family for what they need to do in this day? We need to prepare our houses for the presence of the Lord. When last was the ark in your house? When last was the name of Jesus declared in your house? When last 
that you put off, I'm a piano, and you put on some worship. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm not going to dance. I, I did my part on Friday. And I don't know all these new things, whopping and leaning, and I, don't, I can't even stay up to date with all the youth and what they are listening to. And I have it in my house. My children love music that you can dance to. They love it. And I love spending time with them when they're dancing and they're happy. But there's a time for everything. Amen. This morning in our house, our elders came to me. said, Dad, I want to watch a story. I told her, it's Sunday. It's not time for a story. We are listening to worship. Amen. And I, I thought there's going to be a tantrum. You know, like there's normally with three-year-olds about anything. And in that moment, because I was in unity with my identity, and I spoke from authority, she just said, Okay, Daddy. See, sometimes we are so afraid to offend that you don't execute your authority. And like I said, authority is not to lord over people, but it's to stay and stick to the truth in our houses. It's to pray together as a family. You cannot only pray for your food when you're in spur because people are watching. Amen? And they're in the house. No, the, the TV is on and the sports are on and the news is on. Everything is on except Jesus. But when we are at spur or stake out grown, the people must see we are people of faith. Hallelujah. And you even throw a, you say, Lord, thank you for the food and the precious provision. And you start shaking around the table. You want people to see I, I'm a man of faith. My wife, my children are sitting and eating their food. They are not moving. I'm a man of authority. If it happens in the public without happening in the private, it's powerless. Because people will not only hear you, they will feel you. Actions speak louder than words. It's time that we reconstruct and come back to unity in the inner room. And for you as a person, that is your inner room personally, your personal devotional time with God. Because the Bible says, how can a man stay pure? In Psalms 119 verse 9, it is by only taking heed to the word of God. So it's with washing yourself of the word daily. Out of that, it goes to your family, your house, before anybody comes in this morning. That is your inner room. That is your inner room. Making small changes like, like we do now. When we dro uh, drop off our kids at school, my wife is either singing to them worship songs, teaching them worship songs, or praying with them on the way there. Small differences that we can empower our inner room because if you empower yourself on the outside, it's man-made. But if God empowers you inside and it goes out, it is God-made. Let me tell you, when it's man-made, it depreciates. Everything man-made has a depreciation. If you buy a bad, bri 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 <laughs> Sorry, I'm hungry. When you buy a brand new car, you pay a price. The moment you drive it off that stand with the music playing and everything, you know what it says while it idles? It says, depreciate, 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 depreciate. And it depreciates. And one day you hope to sell it and you try to make your money back. When things are God, made, the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastics, if God is in it, it is forever. Present and past continuous tense. It is forever. Nothing can be added. And nothing can be taken away. If you can start empowering your family in the inner room, their breakthroughs will come supernaturally. God will sustain them. No, but Pastor Drickers, aren't you afraid of what is going on in the schools with your children? My flesh is. But my spirit knows I've prepared them in the inner room. My children don't go to school to get favor. They go to school because they are favored. My children don't go to school to look for authority. I've prayed with them. They have authority. Wherever they put their feet, they will trample upon snakes and scorpions, and they will not be troubled. I will not allow that to happen because Christ is in me. I'm aligned and walking in unity with my identity and my authority. Christ in you is the hope of glory. It's important to understand this is not because of who we are. We are merely vessels. It's because of who He is through you. The greatest channel of blessing, let me rather say this. In my house, God anointed me as the greatest prophet over my house. Why? Because I'm always there. 
You can get your pastor or a pastor to come to your house and pray. But you are there every day. You can speak life every day. And the word of God in the pastor's mouth can be just as powerful in your mouth. It's just about alignment. It's about walking in unity, about really recognizing who he is and what he wants us to do. So we stand. We cannot compromise. We cannot compromise with our children. We cannot compromise compromise in our houses. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And we always know that. But it says, every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you need to condemn. It's in your hands. It's in your hands. It's in our hands. We need to stand for truth in authority in Jesus' almighty name. Do not allow compromise in your house. Do not, ex- do not allow the lie that says prayer, prayer is only optional. Do not allow the lies that says it's December, church is just an option. Do not allow the lies in your house that says not everybody is called to preach the gospel. It is a lie. In the Bible, we read about men of God, we read about women of God, and we read about children of God, all used by God in a unique way. In your families, as you pray, your unique purpose will come forth. It's time that we ignite our families with the fire of the Holy Spirit through prayer and intercession in our houses. Just because your child cannot pray long, do not disqualify them. My three-year-old can now maybe pray for a minute, and my two-year-old maybe 10 seconds, but it is powerful. Enable your children to grow, to understand where they are at. But as a parent, you do not see where they're at, you see where they are going. Enable them to challenge themselves and to grow, that they can become great and powerful men and women of God. Amen. It says, in every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows that is coming to you from the evil one. We do it by faith. And it's by faith that we can know that we stand in unity with our Savior. I want to end off by just speaking about unity in our community before we're going to partake in the table. And if somebody can join me here on the piano, and uh, we are moving to the end of of the message. I want to read for you 1 Thessalonians 5 from verse 12, and I'm going to read out of the message translation. And the topic here is walk in unity within your community. Walk in unity within your community. 1 Thessalonians 5 from verse 12, it reads as follows. We're going to read till verse 28. Please stay with me. It says, and now, friends, we ask to honor those leaders who work so hard for you, who have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in your obedience. Overwhelm them with appreciation and with love. It says, get along among yourselves, each of you doing your part. You see, in this time, we need to have compassion with one another. Because let me tell you, I know, and I think you know as well, even for us as a city, this year had a lot of challenges. Even now, as a community, with our minds, we have faced a tragedy. And our prayers go out to all those families that have lost loved ones. And as a community, we have faced difficulties and hardships. When you work with people, and they might snap at you, do not snap back. It says here, let us have understanding with one another, handling one another in love, each of us doing our part. It says also, our counsel is that you warn those who are doing nothing to get a move on. Those you see around you that are just laying low, not pursuing their purpose. It says motivate them, encourage them. It says gently encourage them. It says reach out to those that are exhausted that look tired and weary, that do not seem hopeful, reach out to them. It says, pulling them back to their feet. It says, be patient with every person around you. Attend to their individual needs. Understand what they are going through. It says, be careful that when you get on each other's nerves, that you don't snap at one another. Remember, if the devil has you fighting against one another, a divided house cannot stand, a divided community cannot stand. Says, look for the best in each other and always do your best to bring that out, even of them. Says, and now, friends, we ask that you honor. Oh, no, we have that. Okay, let us go on. It says, be cheerful. Be cheerful no matter what. 
So I will be cheerful no matter what comes my way. Now, Pastor, how can you say that after everything you just mentioned that we are going through? To be cheerful no matter what in your own human ability, it is not possible. But through Christ that gives you strength, He can turn sorrow to joy. He can turn tears of sorrow into tears of joy. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. It says, this is the way God wants you who belong to Christ Jesus to live. It says, do not suppress the Holy Spirit. Don't stiffle with those who have a word with the Master. It says, on the other hand, don't be gullible. It says, check out everything. It says, be careful. We always say December is silly season. Be careful for schemes and things. Trust the voice of the Holy Spirit to grant you peace. It says, don't be gullible. Check everything out and keep only what is good. Stay to that what is good and honorable and pleasing to God. It says, throw away anything and everything that is tainted with evil. Remember, as a community, we need to make a mind shift. It's not about what's right or what is wrong. It's about, does it glorify God or does it not? It might be right according to law, but if it doesn't glorify God, we should not be in it. Then it's not for us. It's not tailor-made for us. Verse 23 says, Now that you have done that, may God Himself, the God who makes everything whole, everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole. May He put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of the Master, Jesus Christ. The one who has called you is completely dependable. The one who has called you is completely, completely trustworthy, dependable. Trust Him. If He said it, He will do it. If God said it, He will do it. He says, friends, you can get excited about that. But very important, keep up your prayers. Do not cease prayer. Do not neglect prayer. My Father's house is a house of prayer. Do not neglect prayer. It says, greet all the followers of Jesus with a holy embrace. When you walk in a checkers, pick and pay, wherever you go, just smile. Nobody might greet you, but let me tell you, there's somebody watching you. Just smile. Be a beacon of hope in a time where people are going through despair. Just with a smile. Amen. It says, greet them with a holy embrace. It says, and make sure this letter gets read to all the brothers and all the sisters. Don't leave anyone out. Make sure that this is the message that we proclaim as the church in our city, in the great district of Bojanala. Let us be the light. Let us be the example of godly unity. Unity within our community. Uh, an example of unity in our houses and individuals, somebody that's walking in unity with our identity and then releasing authority with a meek heart. This is how the world will know that Christ remains and that He is forevermore. Amen. Now that we know that, we are going to move over to the communion table. Because this communion table is a remembrance of that what I just said. I'm going to ask the communion teams to please come to the front and you are ready to start handing out immediately. And as we take and uh, hand out this communion, it's a remembrance of what He has done. It is through the blood of Jesus that we are enabled to have a heavenly identity. It's through the blood of Jesus that we are enabled to have godly authority. It's through the blood of Jesus and His sacrifice that we can be godly husbands, wives, brothers and sisters. And that is why we partake in the table. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the worship team to also join us here on stage. And as they are handing out the communion, our awesome worship team is just going to minister a song to you. Please enjoy this moment of ministry. And we're going to wait just for everybody to receive. Thank you.
just want to make sure that everybody received I know they are still handing out there if, if if we missed you will you just please raise your hand if there's anybody that has not received communion we want to make sure everybody I was just everybody received all right thank you I'm going to ask just for a if everybody would stand with me with your elements Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence.
Lord, as we partake right now of this communion, the Bible declares in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Then verse 18 says, but now God has set the members, each one of them in the body as he has pleased. And then we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to read verse 24 and 25. It says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in the remembrance of what the body, the breaking of his body means, which is the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And now by his stripes, there is healing for us in this moment. And then as well, it says, in the same manner, he also took the cup of the supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The cup in your hand is the symbol, the declaration that you are no longer slaves, but you have been born into the kingdom of light. You are an heir. You are a co-heir. You have authority. You're not a nobody. You are a somebody. God loves you. He, he knows you by the name. He knows where you are going. He knows what you need. He knows your heart. He is your maker. And He will never, ever, ever slacken His grip upon you. He loves you. So as we partake in the bread, which is the body, I declare as it enters your body right now, the entrance and unfolding of his word will bring light and as this is written in the word i pray that the light that his body brings will take captive every sickness and every disease in jesus name let us take a need thank you for supernatural healing in jesus name supernatural healing we give you praise lord I thank you. You minister to all those who are sick in their bodies now. In the name of Jesus. You are making all things new in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. By your stripes, there is healing. We have faith. We believe in Jesus' almighty name. And also the cup of the new covenant. I pray that every thought as we drink this cup, every thought of you being insignificant or worthless or useless or only good enough to be used and misused you're only good for abuse i pray we take captive all those thoughts in the name of jesus we bring it unto obedience now and i pray that as we drink this cup it will renew our minds and it will bring revelation of who we truly are and our worth that is within the blood of Jesus. If you believe this, let us take and drink. And I would just like to pray over you before we send the cups. If you are there with family, just take your hand quickly. Take hands as family. And let me pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that testifies, Lord, for greater things. We give you praise, Lord, that we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. I thank you this morning, Lord, that the blood of Jesus justifies, the blood of Jesus sanctifies, the blood of Jesus sets us apart for purpose, the blood of Jesus enables us to overcome the evil one, the blood of Jesus sets us apart to walk in purpose and divine wisdom. I thank you, Father, that the blood of Jesus right now, as we take hands and we lift our hands, we apply to the doorposts and lintels of our houses. We thank you, Father, that the devourer will pass over our houses. He will not enter. We apply the blood of Jesus over our businesses in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus over the school doors and entrances. Our children shall be safe in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus over our vehicles, wherever we might go. We apply the blood of Jesus over our bodies. Healing is our portion in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus over our 
minds, we will have the mind of Christ. And in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus is a reality. And it cries out for better things. It cries out for mercy. And we pray this morning for mercy and grace. Therefore, we come just as we are. Because your blood qualifies us. Lord, it's through your blood that we have a way into your presence. And we pray, Lord, receive all the glory and all the honor and all the praise of out of our lives. Everything that we do, be glorified, be lifted high, Lord. Let us walk a life worthy of the higher calling of Christ that is over our lives. We pray this, we believe it, and receive it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You're welcome to send your cups to your right-hand side, my left. And as you have passed your cup, you are just welcome to take your seat as we are about to move over to the offering. I just want to say thank you so much for granting me an opportunity to share with you. To God be all the glory and honor. And it's my privilege now to call uh, Pastor Francois to the stage. Come on, let us welcome our senior pastor to the stage. Thank you so much, Pastor. Come and give Pastor Drikus a great hand. did very, very well. We are proud of you, Pastor Drikus. Hallelujah. Sure. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Uh, I, I've been overwhelmed with his word today. Hallelujah. I, I, we must make it a conference. I'll just take the second session now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come and give Jesus a hand of praise. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 And uh, it's uh, Isaac's birthday, is it? Today. Come on, give me a hug. Hallelujah. Hey, and um, we are proud of you, son. You are awesome. And you are a gift from Jesus. Hallelujah. Straight from the heart of God. How many of you love Him? Hallelujah. You're such a blessing. And we truly appreciate you. And it's Francho Divanog of a sax saxophone play. It's also his birthday. So you are brothers. Hallelujah. From two different mothers, of course. But, <laughs> but may the Lord bless you. And expand your territory and keep you strong and, and, and healthy and May the Holy Spirit inspire you. May Jesus be the inspiration and the motivation of your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we sing for him? scripture that I've received from the Lord in Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 and when Paul, uh, Paul uh, wrote these scriptures he was actually in prison he was also a freedom fighter hallelujah but for Jesus not for politics hallelujah he says keep on rejoicing in the Lord at all times I'll say it again keep on rejoicing then the another translation say let your gracious friendliness be made known to all people first translation say let your gracious attitude be known to all people because the lord is near how many believe believe the lord is near he's with you he's for you hallelujah he will never leave you nor forsake you he says therefore in spite of all circumstances rejoice in the lord delight yourself in the lord and the result of that you will be stirred up with excitement and you'll be friendly because you know God is in control. Hallelujah. I believe your excitement, it's expression of your faith. Hallelujah. If you, if you, if you lack excitement, you are lacking faith. If you truly believe Jesus is in control, how many believe Jesus is in control? 
and he's near you. Hallelujah. He's for me. He's with me. Why do you fear? Why do you look like a sour lemon? Amen. But express your faith with a gracious attitude. Stir up of excitement. Hallelujah. Because God is about to do something great through you and in you. Because His faithfulness will endure forever. Hallelujah. Then verse 12, Paul continues by saying, I know how to be humble. I know how to prosper. You say, I'm not saying because I'm in any, any need. He says, but I've learned to be content in whatever situation I'm in. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, count your blessings one by one. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, do not catch your breath. Count your breaths and be thankful. You know, in COVID, you had to, you had, you, 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 you had to have a medical aid to pay for your next breath. Never take it for granted. Supernatural health, never take it for granted. Your workplace, your friends, your family, come on, count your blessings. Come on, give Jesus be the praise and the thanks and all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our, our financial seed is just a token of our appreciation. Hallelujah. How many of you love Jesus? Hallelujah. I've even learned the secret of being full and of going hungry and having too much and of having too little. He says, but in spite of all of this, I can do all things through Him who gives me strength. Because uh, His conditions will not change your identity. Your identity will change your condition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, that, that car cannot make you. You can make that car. Hallelujah. A, a Ferrari cannot make me, but I can add value to that. So it's still welcome. Hallelujah. Come on, come on somebody. Jesus could have afforded anything, but he has decided to be on the back of a donkey to enter Jerusalem. Oh, that is for certain bishops another revelation. <laughs> Remember, it's just an offering. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, humble yourself underneath the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up. Tell your neighbor, you are able to humble yourself because it's by His strength and His power. You are able to do all things by Him who gives us strength. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it says, nevertheless, it was kind of you to share in my difficulties and my trouble he says you he's saying Philippians but I'm not in Phil I'm not from I'm not talking to the Philippians I'm talking to his vision here he says you his vision also know that in the early days of a gospel when I left Macedonia no church participated with me in the matter of giving and receiving except for you and therefore listen just from my heart from my heart, and I say this from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you so much. We appreciate you so much. I do not have the right words. I'm not so eloquent in my speech, but I'm a stupid. But I, I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you a revelation that you will feel that appreciation this morning 
you are highly appreciated because you are highly favored and deeply loved. Hallelujah. Even the poor word out here, you think you are poor, but in Jesus you are rich. Because you are not, you are, you are not even, you are, you are not even worried to give your last breath for the Lord. You are willing to give up everything. Hallelujah. God sees you. And I salute you. Hallelujah. He says, even while I was in Thessalonica, he says, you provided for my needs, not once but twice. He says, it's not, it's not, you must hear my heart, it's not that I'm looking for your gift. No, I want to see that you receive the fruit that increase to your benefit. Hallelujah. I've been paid in full and have more than enough. I'm fully supplied now that I've received from you that you have sent. He says, this gift that you are giving today, it's a fragrant aroma, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. He says, and I know one thing, I also know there's one thing for sure, and I agree with Paul. He says, I know one thing, I do not know everything, but I know there's one thing, that my God will fully supply your every need according to His riches of His glory in His Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I know my God will do it. And I speak it over you, over you and your family. I pray that God will release a blessing that you cannot contain. Remember it's the Lord that gives you that power to obtain wealth. I'm speaking here about the anointing being released, a blessing upon you to be prosperous. Hallelujah. That even your children will possess the gates of the enemy. Because you are blessed to be a blessing. Watch your every touch shall be blessed. Wherever you go, the blessing of God will flow. His righteousness will break out before you. When people look at you, they'll say it's a well-watered garden. It will never disappoint. This man carries fruit in season and out of season. Hallelujah. When we need a blessing in the business, let this man pray. Let this woman declare a word. Because when they speak, the Holy Spirit happens. The glory of God manifests. Hallelujah. The prayer of the righteous makes tremendous power available. That tremendous power will be released today. God will open up the windows of heaven and command this blessing which you cannot contain. Hallelujah. You have received it in full. Even if you have a lot or not, you have received it in full. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus is your exceedingly great reward. Hallelujah. If God is in it, no one can add anything. No one can take anything away. And the work of God, it is forever. Hallelujah. How many of you realize you are blessed? Above and not beneath. <laughs> the head and not the tail. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Therefore, we don't need to be stingy. We don't need to live in a survival mode and hang on to things. We can just release it. You are a river. The more you release it, the more you receive it. The more you release it, the more you receive it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray that all of you will start to experience it. Just pour out Jesus. And in Jesus will all the other things be found. In Jesus' name. Let us all stand for a moment. I want you to, before you go home, just walk around to the side here and see the building project. This, this week we'll erect the walls. And by the end of February at our G12 Africa conference, I trust God that we'll have a huge conference on the opening of this building. <laughs> Next week we start to have steel structures this side. Hallelujah. Can I get a big amen? God is a faithful God. We they never went to the bank. We are trusting the Lord brick by brick. Hallelujah. School by school, brick by brick. Hallelujah. Pastor, how will you guys do it? We'll do it like you spit brine elephant. You eat it piece by piece. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Say with me, reachable goals. You see, I'm not there yet, but watch the space. We're on our way. We see the reachable goals. Today with Jesus, if you have goals, today with Jesus will be greater than the day before. Because today is the day of salvation. Today, He will help you to reach your goal. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm teaching you something here this morning. And in that, you will lack nothing. Just be patient and stay focused and stay on it. Stay on it. Everyone say, scoop by scoop, brick by brick, my Lord will build my house. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So I pray that this will be a, nat- a physical manifestation of God's supernatural move within our hearts. As we make room, I pray that the Holy Spirit will make room in our hearts for more of Him, for more of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Are you ready to bless the Lord with your first fruit, your tithes, and not giving God our crumbs because we serve a generous God? Hallelujah. We serve a generous God. And I, I pray that the Lord will receive this aroma. Come and close your eyes. Lord Jesus, receive a sacrifice, a loving sacrifice, a aroma, pleasing, acceptable unto you. And I give you praise, Lord, that many will be saved through this financial seed. Many lives will be touched, tra- changed, and be transformed. Lord, unless you build the house, we build in vain. But I know and I declare you, your hand is in it. And therefore no one can take anything away. No one can add anything. And it will be eternal. It will be forever. I pray, Lord, one day when we stand before you and we look at that smile on your face, we will see the effect of our seed. We will see the impact of your grace through our lives. And I give you all the praise. We do not understand everything yet. We do not see everything yet. But one day, Lord, we will see your fullness. We give you the praise, Father. And Lord, every heart that is willing to give, the way we measure it, it shall be measured unto us. But I pray, Lord, that we, you will stretch our hearts, that we will make room for the Holy Spirit, and you will release a blessing pressed in, shaken together and up to overflowing. I give you all the praise and all the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Come and give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Give Him a mighty hand of praise. I, I need you guys to have a praise song. Not can what can wash, wash away my sin. We know Jesus can wash away our sins. A praise song. Can we do a praise song? Amen. Let us, let us be, 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 be grateful unto the Lord. Let us give. And you guys can come. We sow with our cards here in front. Um, we will be card machines here. Uh, great facilities. And um, also wait on the backs. God bless you. Thank you. Come on, God loves a cheerful giver. Let us all stand. Hallelujah.
today hallelujah can we give God another hand of praise Amen. hallelujah hallelujah wow 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 what a service right give the person next to you a high five and tell them you are blessed amen hallelujah well it's my privilege this morning just to share a couple of announcements with you and uh, I want to start with the most important announcement of the day if it's your first time that you are visiting us, we just would like to welcome you. So if it's your first time, would you please mind just to lift up your hand for me real quick. We just want to welcome you. Come on, we've got people here in the middle block. Come on, let's bless them. You are so welcome. Just give them a high five and tell them you're welcome. Just keep your hand up for me real quick. We just want to make sure that we give you a small card. We've got people here on the front. Let's bless them. You're so welcome. Thank you so, so much. Anybody else, just keep your hand up. I just want to make sure that we get everybody here today. Just lift up your hand if you have not given a card yet. 
If the ushers is not attended to you yet, just keep your hand up. We've got people this side. Come on, there's a lady there. God bless you. You're so welcome. Come on, give them a high five. You're so welcome. There we go. There we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I just want to start with our service that we're going to have tonight. And how many of you here believe that this was something tremendous, right? So you don't have to miss out tonight. Tell your neighbor, don't miss out on tonight. All right. So tonight we will have the last evening service for this year, but we're going to have a prophetic worship evening. Amen. Are you happy for that, right? So what we're going to do is we're really going to seek God. We're really going to worship the Lord. And it's going to be tremendous. Listen to me. Our pastors and leaders are really excited for tonight. Let me tell you, we've got such a great expectation for what God is going to do tonight. And we really feel in our hearts, as we were speaking, some of the pastors and leaders, we really feel it in our heart that God is going to do something tremendous. So you don't want to miss this one out, right? You don't want to skip this one. So please come and make your way to church tonight. We'll be here at half past five. It's going to be really something that will recharge you God is going to do something great really so you don't want to miss this so tell your neighbor again don't miss this one right so do join us tonight we're going to have a great time worshiping the Lord and uh, also it's just another two announcements that I'd like to share with you this morning we have our Christmas service, our Christ celebration that's going to happen on the 24th of December. So we won't be having a service on the 25th, but the 24th. That is going to be a Sunday and we will have two services for that Sunday. First one in 8.30 in Afrikaans and then as always our service 10.30 in English. So it's for the whole family. Tell your neighbor it's for the whole family, right? So come and join us here. We're going to have a great time celebrating uh, Jesus and celebrating Christmas. So don't miss out on that one. And then the last one, we have another service on the 31st of December, which will also be a Sunday with Prophet Marius Higgins. So we're going to end off the year that time. And it's going to be 8.30 in Afrikaans, two services, the Afrikaans service as well as the English service at 10.30. So please do join us if you are not away for the holidays join us for that service is going to be tremendous we're going to end off this year as a family together we're going to hear what the lord has to say and god's going to bless us amen and uh, so please guys we'll see you tonight get yourselves ready let us come to church let's celebrate together let's hear what the lord is about to do and say may god bless you and we'll see you tonight bye-bye